Swirl Ape let out a soft, trilling purr of satisfaction as she unfolded into a long stretch, her calico belly round and full from all the delicious prey that had been in the fresh kill pile the night before. Squirrel Ape couldn't remember the last time she'd eaten so much turtle and pigeon. Perhaps never, as she usually didn't try to eat turtle, but Tomi had been dubious as to if a cat could eat turtle, and she had been more than happy to prove him that it was delicious once you figured out how to get under the shell. And although there hadn't been any delicious squirrels to eat, there had been more prey than the clan had seen all new leaf and green leaf. It seemed Star Clan, or at least Luck, had been with Moss Clan as the cats had poured over the forest, collecting all the prey they could carry back to camp in order to celebrate Oak Paw, no, Oak Glades, warrior ceremony, and the apprenticeship of Red Paw and Robin Paw. At the memory of the kits becoming paws, Squirrely flicked an ear and let out a soft purr of relief. As one of the few warriors in the clan who wasn't deaf, pregnant, or half a tree, she had been worried that Lion Star's heavy gaze would have turned her way when it was time to assign mentors to the two kits. Thankfully, Rob and Pa had wanted to become a medicine cat, and Briarstock apparently had agreed to mentor Red Paw right after his brother after all. But for a moment there, Squirrel Ape had felt like her belly was full of squirming frogs at the thought that Lion Star would saddle her with the responsibility of being a mentor. And that would have been so much work, Squirrel Ape yawned, licking her lips as she stretched out on her side, in order to more fully relax and bask in the pleasure of having a full stomach and a nice, long, relaxing nap free of said responsibilities of mentorship ahead of her. Squirrel Leap. Squirrel Leap jumped to her feet, her fur bristling and her tiny stubby tail sticking straight up in alarm, then relaxed as she recognized the voice, and Lion Star's large frame pushed through the bushes beside her. The Moss Clan leader twitched an ear her way, an amused expression in his eyes as Squirrel Leap settled herself, batting a leaf casually off of her ear. I was hoping I'd find you here. I have something I need you to do. Oh? Squirrel Ape stretched, running one paw over her face as she studied her leader with increasing interest. A nap had been just the thing she wanted to do, but perhaps Lion Star had heard of some squirrels darting about the branches around camp. Or perhaps he'd even ask her to go out with Dogaze to gather some medical herbs, which would be a fun adventure in its own. Squirrel Ape felt a flicker of excitement at the idea of heading out of clan territory for a bit. It would be good to stretch her legs, leaving camp responsibilities to those poor unfortunate, er, those hard-working, dedicated clan members who enjoyed taking care of those things. Yes, Lion Star stepped aside and waved his tail, gesturing Tomi forward. You'll notice I asked Briarstock to mentor Redpaw instead of you. Well, I don't want you to think I don't respect your hard-earned skills and your ability as a warrior of our clan. Lionstar glanced at Squirrel Leap, a playful gleam in his eyes. But I thought perhaps for your first time as a mentor, it may be easier if it was a cat you're more familiar with already. I know Tomi may seem a bit old to be a paw, but he has asked for help in becoming strong enough to be an official warrior of the clan. And since you don't have an apprentice of your own yet, I thought perhaps you'd be just the cat to take on this important task. Squirrel Ape blinked at her leader, her eyes wide and mouth slightly open in surprise as she watched all the peaceful, relaxing, responsibility-free days of snatching naps under the bushes that she had planned disappear into Tomi's excited blue eyes, which she actually had opened for once. I, er, that is, Squirrel Ape stammered, unable to find any words. It wasn't as though she could argue with the decision. She was one of the only warriors left, and she had been teaching Tomi how to hunt for quite some time. But... Squirrel Ape took a deep breath, gathering her strength. Specifically because she had been helping Tomi learn to hunt, or at least trying to learn to hunt, she knew this task was not going to be an easy one. Isn't it wonderful, Squirrel Ape? Tomi purred, stepping forward towards his friend with an eager bounce to his steps. You get to teach me how to become a proper warrior, so I could join the clan. Squirrel Ape sighed, a helpless smile coming to her at the sound of Tomi's eagerness. Of course, she meowed, forcing herself to sound more enthusiastic than she felt. This'll be great. 
Though, she thought privately, as she began to discuss the specifics of Tomi's training with Tomi on Lionstar, it would take all the luck in the forest and more than a few lost naps to help Tomi become a warrior before it was time for them both to move into the Elder's Den. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Warrior Cats Challenge here in Sims 3 with all expansion packs and quite a bit of custom content. And we are here with Moss Clan because we're getting ready for a very special day. I am pretty sure, you guys, that any minute now, we should be having the birth of Honey Wishes Kits. So I'm not sure when that's going to happen. Oh my goodness, and look at all of the cats. Everybody is in the mood to train today. Apparently that's like, wow, everyone is training. Look at all of this. I mean, we got Tomy and Squirrelleep, and Squirrelleep has been asked to officially be Tomy's mentor now. Tomy is a little bit old to be a paw because he and Squirrelleep are close to the same age, but he is not an official warrior, so hopefully this training will do him some good. There you go, Tomy! There you go! Not to mention, these two actually do want to become best friends. Oh, and by the way, in the intro I realized earlier I said he had blue eyes. Tomy, I didn't know what color his eyes are. Tomy, where did you go? There you are, Tomy. I didn't know what color his eyes are because he actually rarely opens them, but Tomy does not have blue eyes. He has one very, very dark green, almost uh, like gray eye, and he has one amber colored eye, kind of more a gold color, more than amber actually. So he's got multicolored eyes, which is probably why he was so photogenic and his old owner used to be a photographer who would have really, really adorable cats and she would take great cat photos. Well, that's where Tomy, uh, that's where Tomy's from and that's who his old owner was, his mine that he ran away from by accident when he was being chased by the dogs after a photo shoot went, photo shoot went south. But Tomy does want to become friends with Squirrely, but he doesn't have blue eyes and they're currently training. And over here, Red Kit is training up with his mentor, his brand new mentor, Briarstock. And Briarstock Stock, unfortunately doesn't have any interest. He wants to go and talk with Crowfeather. He's missing Crowfeather. We might go on a patrol to see Crowfeather in a little bit. But unfortunately so far he has a lot of interest in Robin Kit and Lizard Paw, but not so much in Red Kit and Ditto. So they're not really that close, but hopefully they'll become closer as time goes on. And then Doe Gaze is over here sniffing around, but I think she should come over and spend a little bit of time with Honeywish and groom her because Honeywish is definitely going to be having those kits pretty soon. And I know Honeywish wants to be best friends with Dogaze. I wonder. Oh, I know! Dogaze! Dogaze! We should have Dogaze go and get some of the lavender. We should go see if the lavender is good over in the garden. And speaking of the garden, we should probably have Lizard Paw and Moss Leaf go work with the Spirit of the Land. Ooh, she's sniffing around. What are you doing over here, Moss Leaf? I guess Moss Leaf is coming over to talk with the Spirit of the Land. So, Willow, hey! Hey, that's you! That's you, Willow! Commune with the plant, garden. Well, we'll have Willow come over and maybe do a little bit of watering and taking care of all of these plants. Since the spirit of the land has to like actively take care of these, but I think we'll have, and I think we'll have Lizard Paw over here as well. Let's bring Lizard Paw over. Cause I think he and Moss Leaf would come over and they're gonna kind of interact with Willow a little bit. I think Lizard Paw definitely learned a lot during his time as a tree. So we'll definitely be working with him quite a bit <laughs> to be able to like teach Moss Leaf. He might start teaching Moss Leaf some useful things that he learned about how to communicate. See, he's off to sniff around too. That's interesting. On how to communicate with Willow, the spirit of the land, so that they can have it taken care of. So go ahead and tend the garden. I'm going to say that that's what they did. And then Moss Leaf, let's have you come over. And, oh, I'm going to say Lizard Paul was coming. He was coming to sniff around. And he was coming to sniff around at the plant. I'm going to say he was going to give Moss Leaf this flower. She does love those flowers. Those hibiscuses are one of her favorite things. So let's have that happen really quickly. Come here. Come here. We're going to get... In fact, do I have any... Let's see. Do I have any? I do have some plants in here. I don't think we should have these plants because I think the season's passed. So one of the things we're trying to do with Moss Clan is every season, and actually we should do this with Branch Clan too. Basically all of the herbs that uh, could potentially go bad, how do I explain it? All of the herbs that could go bad inside of a, oh, Lizard Paw, stay here. Stay here for, oh, he's off to go catch something. Well, we'll give him the flowers and he can give them to his mom in a little bit. But I'm trying to decide if we should make some of the herbs go bad 
There we go. Harvested that up. Oh, it's barren. That means it's it's dead plant now. So we'd have to plant the hibiscus again. I wonder if we should be allowed to do that or just plant the seeds like we were talking about. We're going to have to figure it out. I think just planting the seeds is a, is a fair way to balance it out because we could get seeds for anything. I'm pretty sure we could get seeds for hibiscus. So we'll, we'll, don't worry about it. I'm just thinking about Moss Clan and how to deal with their spirit of the land powers again. Moss Leaf, what are you off doing? I think Moss Leaf, she feels very safe here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let her groom herself and kind of relax. All right, so that's what's going on over here. And we'll have um, Lizard Paw give his mom that delightful flower present in just a little bit. What is Bartram up to? Be nuzzled? Be nuzzled by who, sir? So Bartram was actually hanging out. Oh, Robin Kit? Or excuse me, you should be Robin Paw. Okay, give me just a second. I'm going to change their names. Well, I'll change their names later. But basically, Robin, Robin Paw, what are you doing with Bartram? And then... Oh, that's so cool. So Red Red K actually, or Red Paw, excuse me, actually went off and caught himself a turtle. So he's a very good natural hunter. Just like that, he's already gotten some new prey for the prey pile. So that's pretty interesting. He's off to go try to train with his dad. Interesting. And Lizard Paw did not catch the thing he was after. Bartram. I can't believe Bartram. Like, what kind of relationship... He already has a wee bit of a relationship with Robin. What were you doing? And she's off to go hide. I don't even know. Maybe she was just saying hello and kind of checking in on him. And then Doge's. Doge's. I think we're going to have Doge's come over. Come here, Robin Kit. And socialize and nuzzle. Hold still. Okay. Robin Kit. Robin Paw, even. You're not a kit anymore. Robin Paw. Hold still for just a second. We're going to have the medicine cats kind of interact for a moment and then hopefully go over and get out of here. <laughs> Maureen, just ignore her. Like she is just the mail person and I think the mailbox is like blocked. So she's just freaking out about it. But let's go ahead. Oh, be nuzzled by Squirrelip. I should have let that happen. But he's going to come over and he's going to give his mom the, the gift that he got for her. So nuzzle and we can raise their relationship up a little bit. And Willow, let's grab. Let's see, Lizard Paw. Yeah, he's coming on over. And he is going to actually give the hibiscus flower to Moss Leaf in just a second here. If we can reach Moss Leaf. Nuzzle, nuzzle. And then where is. Where is. Okay, hibiscus flowers. There we go. And no, get in the inventory. There we go. So Lizard Pot can give those to his mom now and hopefully get a little bit of a relationship increase. Honey Wish, why are you over here? And then the lavender should be over here somewhere if we have any left. Do we have any sweetgrass lavender? Ah, dang it. It's not ready to... I guess we could technically try to use the spirit of the land to like bloom the lavender. Whoa! <gasps> you guys! You guys! I think it's kid time! Whoa! <gasps> you guys! It's Honey Wish's kids! Oh my gosh! We've got to see what they look like! Oh my goodness gracious! Okay! Okay! Oh my goodness! She had her babies! She had her little babies! Oh my gosh! You've done wonderfully, Honey Wish, Doge's purred, giving the young kids another careful sniff before stepping away from the queen and her newborns. Behind Doge's, Robin Paw was sitting around a large pile of dried herbs and a few prey items, the young apprentice's eyes still wide with awe and wonder. Once it was clear that Honey Wish and her kits were safe, Robin Paw hadn't been able to let out a single peep of sound, and had simply sat watching the queen and her kits stunned with delight at the birth she had witnessed. They're healthy, Honeywish murmured, her voice exhausted but alert. She stared down at the small kits at her side, then laid her head back down onto the soft moss of her freshly made bed, closing her eyes as she took in the new cat's scent, a tiny thread of kit present under the heavier scents of lavender and the other odd herbs that Doge's and Robinpaw had brought into the makeshift nursery. As she watched the kits, something twisted slightly inside her heart. Love. An amazingly powerful and deep love that she had never dreamed could be so full and whole so instantly. 
and something else. Love tinged with loss and a grief she forced herself to keep far, far away, or else it would drown her. Love that had been lost. Honeywish drew in another deep breath and forced herself to focus on the small kit's sense, pushing away the other thoughts that pecked at her mind like chickadees. She had to be here, right now, for the kits. Later. Later there would be time to address the fury and grief she had tucked away. Later, there would be time to see if she could find some trace of the trail that the two-leg had gone on, some stray scent that would allow her to find out what had happened. The kit squirmed at her side, making tiny noises that made Honeywish's heart dance with a shocked sense of joy, and she closed her eyes again, seeing the outline of her lost best friend and mate in her mind. Don't worry, Silverfang. Honeywish murmured, so quietly her voice didn't rise above the gentle fussing of the kits. I won't leave yet. I'll take care of your legacy, like we always wanted. The honey-colored queen sighed softly and bent her head down to lick the tiny kits, peace settling into her heart around the sense of loss and anger. She had an important task to do. There would be time for the answers she wanted later. All right, and there we go, you guys. So Honeywish has just given birth to her kits, and I am very, very happy to welcome to Moss Clan Bumble Kit and Bee Kit. So we have Bumble and Bee, and they are actually a set of brothers. And so we've got two little boys here, and I couldn't help it. I tried to come up. I know I wanted to name one Bee Kit, and I tried to come up with a different name, but Bumble just stuck in my head. And so we have Bumble and Bee. And I'm going to say these two brothers, I already feel like they have a a really 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 close bond and I think that they're gonna have personalities that complement one another so I'm really crossing my fingers crossing our paws to make sure that these cats hopefully we'll make it through life together because being a kit is very dangerous and Honeywish actually did a great job because it is green leaf that is the safest time of the year actually for the queens to give birth to kits and so she did fine I rolled to see if the kits would be healthy and they were healthy rolled to see if Honeywish would be healthy and she was healthy so we didn't even have to use up our medicine cat resources which is really nice because it seems like every time there's a birth in moss clan it goes really easy but every time there's a birth in branch clan we have to like do dig through our plasma beetles and our rainbow snails like no tomorrow but these two are really quite adorable I'll kind of let you guys get a good up close look at them before they start moving around being the wiggly little kits that they are but they have a really interesting combination of Honeywish and Silverfang's coats you have Honeywish's coloring don't worry there's none of her scar markers I made sure they didn't have any of those on them and they've got like her light sort of tabby classic tabby swirls very very light under their fur there and they both have the same markings i thought that was really interesting they have identical markings just different fur styles and don't worry this smush nose that actually will go away when bumble kit bumble kit is the one on the left here when bumble kit grows up that'll go away but bumble kit and Bee Kit both have kind of the honey colored eyes that their mother do. So she has one honey, does. Their mother has one honey colored eye and one green eye. And their father has uh, black eyes, but one is blind because he was hit by a car a long time ago. And so you can see they've got one of their mom's eyes, one of their dad's eyes. Really, really cool. Very adorable little ones. And you just look like the playful little scramp I know you're going to be. All right. So let's go ahead and look at their stats so you guys can get to know our two newest members of the clan and yes i have rolled for their personality you'll see their personalities emerging as time goes on but let's just say that they inherited their mother's temper and their father's patience in varying quantities between the two of them so bumble kit right here is playful and friendly so we're gonna go ahead and socialize socialize activate that friendliness socializing with your brother and then b kit over here is playful and proud so b kit has a little bit more i would say on the surface at least of Honeywish in Bee Kit and then Bumble Kit has a little bit more of a uh, silver thing just on the surface but they're really adorable and we're gonna go ahead I'm gonna let them well I was gonna say chase around <laughs> Honeywish, you just gave birth. You shouldn't be out hunting. Oh, she's already off practicing her hunting. Oh my goodness, because she wants to master the hunting skill. And she also wants to socialize with her babies. Probably everybody does. Let's bring Dogaze over because Dogaze, yeah, Dogaze wants to socialize with the babies too. Okay, hang on. 
she is going to come over and we're actually going to have her talk to Bumble and sniff B to make sure. Okay, Bumble, socialize. And you two go ahead and hang on there. B, does anybody want to meet you? What about, I think Mossleaf would be quite excited. Oh, she's being sniffed. Yeah, she wants to sniff B and she also wants to sniff Bartram and scratch on the cat condo. Okay, we're going to have her come over and let's come meet. Oh my goodness. Be friends with Bumble. She already, Mossleaf really is quite the queen at heart. She loves taking care of the kits. Oh my goodness. I don't know who to send over first. I think Robin Kit or Robin Paw. She's properly called Robin Paw now. Would, yeah, she wants to come over and sniff. So let's bring her over because I think she's extremely excited about the wee little kits. And then we'll have to go back to Lizardpaw. Lizardpaw's just watching bugs right now. He also wants to scratch on stuff. All right, come here, Dogeis. You want to sniff Bum or talk to Bumble. And then when Honeywish gave birth, somehow these bushes and clovers showed up. I'm not sure why. Oh my. I figure it's kind of fun to represent change and growth in the clan. And man, Willow's really excited about this. So I'm going to say Willow was celebrating and grew the, gr the clover and grew these bushes over here. But I think it's really exciting to sort of show off change and growth in the clan by making the landscape alter as well. So I think it's fitting that Honeywish, who really loves honey, um, somehow the birth of her kit, somehow fancy smancy, a little forest spirit stuff, made these bushes that the bees are certainly going to love come up. So Dogeys, let's go ahead socialize with the little one and robin paws over here and she's probably ready let's see sniff bee kit is this bee kit yeah come over and sniff bee kit make sure bee kit where are you going bee kit's like i'm off to scratch stuff no stay here Do robin paw robin paw wants to sniff you there we go man what is up with this little kit hey bee kit bee kit sniff sniff bee kit all right and then let's see this is Sniff Bumble, because I think the medicine cats would want to make sure that the kits are okay. And then Honeywish, Honeywish, you get over here. Come on, Honeywish. I know you want to train. Ah, uh, okay. She would be least interested in becoming best friends with Mossleaf. So I'm going to, oh, she wants to become best friends with Bee Kit. That's so adorable. She wants to come and socialize with Bee Kit too. Totally something. We need to let her come and interact with her kidlets. And do you want to do anything else with the kits? Bee Kit. Sniff Bumble Kit, socialize with Bumble Kit. Oh, they're just so cute. And then I think Mossleaf would be interested in coming over. Oh, she's getting nuzzled by Squirrelip, who she actually does want to sniff. Where is Squirrelip? Oh, there's Squirrelip. So let's go ahead and sniff her so we can get that out of the way. Looks like Briarstalk and Lizardpaw are currently watching the bugs. I think they're watching the bugs because Bartram seems to be a little bit interested in the bugs as well. So, but he does want to talk to uh, Redpaw. So Redpaw... Maybe we can have you- No, Red Paw, why? Why with the fleas? Why? I'm gonna have to collect up some some oranges on our territory and, and use that to get rid of those fleas. Ah. Oh, and then that's a good question, actually, you guys. So if it's on our territory and it's the forest of the land cat, uh, the forest spirit cat, I should say, I think they can go ahead and collect anything that grows on our territory without having to use a flower in trade. I think that's what we're going to do. But if they want to collect things that are uh, elsewhere, then they have to go there first before they can collect the herbs. And if they want to plant things, then they have to use a flower in trade with willow. Um, but I think they can collect things without having to do that. So we'll collect some oranges from the orange tree in a little bit, and then we can get rid of <laughs> red paws. Red paw, why? Red paw, why did you have to get fleas? And he wants to catch a bird. We're going to have Bartram come over and sniff and talk with you. Because I think Bartram would have maybe been hanging out by the fresh kill pile for his own uh, own curiosity of what's over here. And then you know, everybody's kind of guarding it. So maybe he's just going to go find something else to do with his day. Thank you very much just then. All right, Mossleaf, I'm going to send the kits over to play with them. Mossleaf in a second. So little V kit, your mom already super duper loves you and wants to socialize and interact with you. Oh, and she wants to play with Bumble. This is just precious. She wants to bring Bumble a gift. Oh, that's so sweet. What would she give Bumble? Okay, and Robin Paw. I think Robin Paw would be very, very curious. This is technically, in fact, this is the first time Robin Paw has ever seen a kit. Ah, oh, look at that. It's so cute. So I think Robin Paw would be super curious. And pretty in love. And really, as a medicine cat, we talked a lot, or Dogeys talked a lot about the responsibilities of a medicine cat last time. But I wonder, nuzzle, nuzzle, 
Maybe give your baby a little groom. But I wonder it, how Robin Paw feels being a medicine cat apprentice looking after the kits. Because really, in an ideal world, a medicine cat feels like any kits that uh, are born into the clan are their own. Not like directly, like parentally, hey, these are mine. But they're responsible for them. They love them. They kind of have that role of sort of being like a surrogate parent to all kits born in the clan. And even when those kits get old, they have the responsibility of kind of serving the whole clan as their kits and I think Robin Paw is feeling a little bit of that love and inspiration right now with little Bumble Kit. Oh goodness though you know that's a really more passionate way of looking at kithood and kits than the medicine cat of branch clan has towards kits who um who are in the clan that's for sure. Oh B Kit you're so cute! You're so cute, be kit Okay, best friends, Bumble. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's so much going on. Dogays, get back over here. I want to clear up Honey Wishes, like wishes. So Honey Wishes wishes, that's kind of funny. So that we can go ahead and have her like just interact with her babies. How much more? How much more? You guys should be best friends already. You guys are almost best friends. Just hurry and become best friends so we can move on. And Robin Pa um, play. I think she would goof around with the kit. I think she'd be having a great time and just goof around with the kit for a little while. And we've got so much prey in the prey pile. What's Tommy doing? Oh, Tommy wants to. Oh, he wants to come see the kits. Oh, that's so cute. All right, let's send Tommy and Squirrely up over here. The whole clan just has to come over. Oh, she wants to give Tommy a gift? Oh, cool. And sniff lizard paw, sniff red paw. Red paw's busy. So we'll come over and introduce ourselves to Bumble Kit. We'll say Tommy and Squirrely are coming over to do that now, too. And then nuzzle, nuzzle, sniff, 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 nuzzle, nuzzle. Try to get these two to be friends. Bee Kit, you may be freed in just a second here if you're lucky. All right, come here, Bee. No, Bumble Kit, come back. Oh, all right. Go ahead and sniff, sniff. Make sure that's okay. Then these two are going to interact for a little bit. There we go. And then Squirrelleep's popping over to see what's going on over here. Was it Bumble? Yeah, she wanted to sniff Bumble. So we'll have her sniff Bumble. Kind of introduce herself, see what's going on. Bumble! Oh, Bumble, you live up to your name. Oh my gosh, that was so adorable. Bumble, you just tripped right over your own little paws. Oh, I think Tommy would have been like, whoa, are you okay? So I think that's how Tommy is going to be uh, introduced to Bumble, is Bumble just tripped over his own little paws. Oh, that's an adorable little story. And he's worried about little Bumble. All right, come on. There you go. There you go. Tommy, what do you think? What do you think about seeing kits, Tommy? Hmm? I think kits sound like a lot of responsibility that a certain somebody else <laughs> really doesn't want anything to do with, though. All right, so let's come down here. Look at everybody. Wow. Moss Clan is finally starting to feel like it actually has some cats in it compared to Branch Clan because Branch Clan is just so overflowing all of the time with cats. We finally got a few cats in here, though I don't know about Bartram. He's uh, a little bit suspicious, if you ask me. So we'll have to see. He even wants to check out the new kits, too. And he also wants to check out... Where's Oak Glade? Oak Glade. It's so interesting to have a new name. There you are, Oak Glade. All right, you're over here. And you're also curious about the new kits. And you want to see them in a minute, too. Oh, and he wants to talk to his sister. Where's his sister? So we'll have him come over and talk to his sister. All right. Maybe to see, like, what's going on with the kids. Don't you dare give everybody your fleas, though. Dogez is going to see those fleas and be quite firm about checking that out. All right. Are you guys are you guys friends yet? Come on. Come on. Ah, uh, come on. All right. Uh, what about special, playful? No, you can't do that. <laughs> I forget I have that mod now and then. Uh, nuzzle. Come on. Socialize. Kit, what are you doing? Do you want some attention? Your mom wants to be best friends with you. Squirrely, Squirrely, you look terrified. Squirrely, look at this. <laughs> Squirrely, you look absolutely terrified. I don't think she's much for kits. Oh, Squirrely. All right. I think she's going to be like, um, I have to go do some hunting now. So she'll probably call Tommy over. So that they can go and do a little bit of hunting and then they can share tongues afterwards. So we'll send them over. Squirrelleep really loves hunting kind of over in this area. Usually because she's trying to find some squirrels. But we'll send them over here for today. One, two, three, four, five. And then 
one, two, three, four, five. There we go. So Squirrelleep is out of there. Squirrelleep saw those kits. Squirrelleep wants to get away from those kits. Squirrelleep is trying to escape being anywhere near kits. And then the kits themselves are off to go have a good time. They want out of here. They want to go watch bugs. They want to go have a good time. How do you wish? For crying out loud, please. Oh, we're gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and let um, Honey Wish, I guess, chase Dogaze to try to increase their relationship a little bit. No, wait. Dogaze just saw those fleas, so Dogaze will have just seen the fleas. So let's bring Mossleaf over. Mossleaf, why are you chasing? <laughs> oh, Mossleaf, why? Oh, and she wants to sniff Bartram. All right, and she was chasing Willow. So we're gonna say Mossleaf here. Come over here, Mark Willow. They're having a good time. That's hilarious. But she's going to mark Willow. And thus get permission because she's already best friends with Willow. Though their relationship did suffer for a little while. Yay! Tommy just improved his skill. Wait, where'd all the oranges go? We just had oranges. Oh, I guess she already harvested the oranges. Alright, well we'll go ahead and give all of the oranges over to Mossleaf. So we'll say Mossleaf is hanging out with Willow. And collecting up that stuff. So friendly, sniff, friendly, mark. And then we'll send Dogaze over in just a minute. Well, oh, and now she wants to groom Honey Wish. All right. And then friendly, groom. Oh, are they best friends now? <gasps> They're best friends now. You guys, yay. I'm so happy. All right. And Honey Wish wants to give little Bumble Kit a present. Oh, that's so cute. So we'll take care of that in just a minute. So they're very happy and they're bonding. Robin Paw is exhausted. It seems Robin Paw has really just her mind has been completely blown. There's new kits. This is the first time she's ever seen kits born. Now she's just resting, kind of tucked into the clover, feeling like the world is wonderful and she's at peace. And I kind of feel like her sense of peace and contentment would summon up her brother, believe it or not, because she's asleep in the clovers in Willow's little glade. So I feel like lizard paw may somehow sort of sense that peace and contentment radiating off of his sister and be interested in seeing uh why like why is she so happy and what's going on over there all right and he wants to scratch on the scratching post so we're going to come over here and bartram and lion star are kind of tussling together i think that lion star is kind of like good naturedly teasing bartram so i heard you fought off three dogs at once and he wants to see what he's made of and Bartram does want to sniff Lion Star. He is a very curious cat, after all. Alright. And I think I'll send Lizard Paw over. Squirrelly caught a spotted beetle! Yay! Alright, so that's what's There you go, Bartram. And he's curious about the kits too. Where's Oak Glade? Oak Glade is just watching the beetles. I feel like Bartram would kinda zip all around the place. And then we're come we're gonna send him over here. And he can come and socialize, and he would definitely talk a lot. I think Bartram would be one of those cats that has his ear to the ground, trying to see uh, what the other cats might have to say about things. All right, is this Bee Kit? No, that's Bumble Kit. Doggies, doggies! Isn't this so exciting? There's babies. There's babies, and Tommy didn't catch whatever he was after. <laughs> Why can Tommy never catch anything? And we have a chinchilla here still. Oh, and I was thinking we could start using prey items, maybe some prey items and special items that the cats find to make it so that we can alter the physical environment that the cats are in. For instance, this is currently their only moss beds that they really have, and they're, it's not really well protected. We don't really have a lot of bushes. So I was thinking, what if we could make it so we could gather up up, um, a whole bunch of prey items that could be fertilizer and then maybe some special seeds or like the bamboo seeds or something like that or maybe we could gather up some flowers and plant I'm using quotations air quotes in the background plant bushes and things like that so that we could expand the camp I like the idea of changing the camp both based off of what season it happens to be during the change of the seasons and our behind the paws episodes but also making it oh squirrely missed stuff too no empty chip bag squirrely and I have not forgotten. Squirrely and Dogaze are still due to go out. Don't worry. I have not forgotten about that. Sniff Red Paw, Lion Star, Dogaze. Um, let's see. Dogaze is busy. And let's see. Maybe he'll talk to his brother. 
It has been a long time since they've really interacted. And is that Bumble Kit? Yeah, let's come over here and sniff Bumble Kit. Yeah, Bartram's just extremely curious. He's always sticking his nose into everything, seeing what the cats are up to. But yeah, I do like the idea of changing what, how the clan territory looks, not only during what season it is, but also so the cats themselves, it's almost like Tokis is trying to keep an eye on the new kit and the newcomer, which I, it's a very good thing to do. But also so maybe the cats themselves can kind of leave a legacy behind. Kind of like Honeywish gave birth today. So now we have the delightful little bunch. In fact, I'm kind of tempted. What we, what do you guys think about figuring out somewhere where Honeywish could maybe gather up enough honey or some way where we could have another beehive show up on the area? That'd be interesting if we just come up with different ways that the cats can unintentionally sort of collect items that become new spots in their territory. Kind of like the way wild animals do. They don't notice that they're seed dispersers. They don't notice that they alter environments based off of how much prey they eat or don't eat but wild animals do do that so it'd be interesting to see that play out with our cats too and also I really think it's very telling Robin Pot is over here sound asleep so I'm gonna send over her brother because I think that Lizard Paw is actually becoming much 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 closer to his sister here and he is very tired so I think we're gonna go ahead and let him sleep here next to his sister in the clovers so he must be picking up on her sense of peace and contentment and her sense of happiness in the clovers. And so we're going to let him go ahead and rest over here because I think he'd be very sensitive to that and just kind of want to be part of that. All right. And then, oh, goof around with your mom. It looks like Bee Kit is very, very energetic and currently running around with Honeywish. And Honeywish is very excited about her new kits, it seems. And she seems very, very focused on them, too. After all, she knew when she and Silverfang decided to have kits, they knew he wouldn't be around forever. So they wanted to try to make the most of their time together and leave a legacy behind for for their relationship with one another. And that is why Honeywish and Silverfang decided to have kits, or more Honeywish decided and Silverfang was more or less badgered lovingly into, into the agreement. And Honeywish knows her first and foremost obligation is to take care of her kits because she always knew that they may not have a long time together. They just expected to have a little bit more time than they did with the unexpected intrusion of the two leg into Moss Clan. But we'll have to think about all of those things next time. And I'm thinking next time it may either be a special or it may be time to pop back into Branch Clan for a few days to see how Branch Clan is doing now that Moss Clan seems to be on the up and up, which makes sense because Green Leaf and New Leaf are supposed to be the seasons when Moss Clan has the most to celebrate. So I'm going to leave Honeywish with her brand new babies. I'm very excited to see that we finally have some growth in Moss Clan. And we will definitely move on to the extreme dramas and the tension that we have left behind in Branch Clan next time. So I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.